1990, Amartya Sen and Sudhir Anand observed that poor people's lives are ba battered and diminished in many and various ways. And so the task of those designing multidimensional poverty measures is to better capture the clustered and overlapping deprivations that they experience. But of course, the aim of any poverty measure is not simply to have an academically credible tool. The aim is far more than that. And in 2019, in the book published posthumously by Sir Tony Atkinson, Measuring Poverty Around the World, he speaks of the link to action, writing that learning about the extent of poverty is important, but it is the link with action that marks out this issue from many other subjects of study in the social sciences. Poverty statistics matter because they motivate people to tackle a key challenge. So in the course that follows, we will be talking about uh, multidimensional poverty indices or MPIs, but we are not speaking of them as an end in themselves. Rather, we are inviting people who are policy experts, who are managers, who are students, who are um, politicians. We are inviting them to become part of the community that uses the MPIs for action and also inviting academics to help us to improve them and think in different and deeper ways about the interlocked deprivations uh, that poor people experience. A few introductory remarks are quite useful. One is why do we want to measure poverty multidimensionally? And it is not because it is better than a monetary poverty measure. We need both. We need to measure a consumption or an income deprivation because not having money, you're, you have a lack of kind of a freedom and autonomy to make decisions to decide whether to buy this or that, to decide how to express yourself. Um, money is a very convenient uh, general purpose resource and monetary poverty uh, does accurately reflect uh, a kind of deprivations that always do come up. But sitting alongside this, poor people's descriptions in participatory exercises of what poverty means to them and also descriptions of experts and other communities who work alongside rarely um, think of poverty only as comprising monetary deprivations. And the importance of this is that um, the actions to redress poverty must directly redress these other kinds of deprivations. Now, when I was a student, or when many of us studied, we were taught that income and monetary poverty is a good proxy for low education, for poor health care, for lack of access to infrastructure, uh, for poor employment conditions and uh, situations. But now that we have microdata and that we have implemented multidimensional poverty measures alongside monetary in so many countries, what we find is something different we don't necessarily find that the same populations are identified as poor. When Chile launched its MPI originally, it found that 14.4% of people were monetary poor by their income measure, and that 20.4% of people were multidimensionally poor. So you would think that 14.4% of people were poor by both measures, and a few extra were multidimensionally poor. But actually, what they found was a significant mismatch. Only 5.5% of people had both kinds of deprivations, and many were only income poor or only multidimensionally poor. And that mismatch persists in European studies, in Bhutan, in China, in different data sets, Uganda, Nepal. And so by measuring poverty multidimensionally using non-monetary indicators, we are bringing into our visual field, in terms of metrics, people and deprivations that may not be perfectly proxied by monetary measures. So that's a justification and the suggestion many governments 
have had is that they use both poverty statistics together as official, permanent national statistics, a monetary poverty measure and a multidimensional poverty measure. And both, in a sense, are of equal importance. It's like having two eyes. If you try to pour a cup of tea and you can't see out of one, you might miss your cup because you can't see it in 3D. But with both eyes, you can see with greater depth, with greater precision. So the suggestion is not to uh, replace monetary poverty measures with multidimensional, but to sub supplement them as a system, as a, a co-equal uh, insight into a very important set of population for a country. And I spoke of national poverty measures, which are official permanent statistics of poverty, usually created and designed um, by both policymakers together with statisticians, usually um, released by either the National Statistics Office or the same institution that releases the monetary poverty measures in that country. But the idea is that they are permanent, that they will come up again and again through different elections, through different political parties and governments. And that the question is not so much whether to measure poverty, but how to fight it. And that's where the debate and the energies and the creativity should be concentrated. National MPIs are tailored to their country situation. The national MPI in Colombia will have employment. Uh, national MPI in Bhutan will have land and livestock variables that would be different from a different context uh, where it might have empowerment as in Dominican Republic or environmental conditions as in Chile um, or childhood and youth conditions as in Colombia. And so national MPIs are tailored to their own circumstances. They use national data sets, though in some cases they use the multiple indicator cluster survey or demographic and health surveys as appropriate. And they're updated um, every time those, those surveys are updated for the country. There are also other MPIs, for example, the Global Multidimensional Poverty Measure, which OFI releases with the UNDP uh, each year. And that measure covers over 100 developing countries. Um, and it defines a very acute level of multidimensional poverty. Now that measure is comparable across the countries. And what that means is that the indicators do not vary according to the country context. It's the same. It's three dimensions and it's 10 indicators. And for each country, you are deprived if anyone in your household is malnourished or if a child is not attending school up to the age at which they would complete class eight. So a comparable measure uses the same definition of poverty and then has an an, a comparable measuring rod for each country. So you can compare how neighboring countries are doing and it's the same measuring rod or you can compare Thailand to um, Nigeria on the same measuring rod. So that's what the global MPI does. There is also an Arab MPI. Latin America has regional uh, explorations of MPI. Um, and so there are different measures that could be used to compare sets of countries and for those MPIs, you have to have the same indicator definitions for each country. So this course will be focused on national MPIs that are adapted to the context, but we will also have some examples from the global MPI implemented with UNDP, where instead of having nationally specific specifications, every country has the same structure and at poverty ranges from 0% to 91% across 100 developing countries. Why is there such interest in multidimensional poverty? Partly, it is the flowering of many deep participatory studies and exercises alongside poor people and communities trying to better um, calibrate our metrics and their aspirations. But the Sustainable Development Goals give a very strong impetus to work on multidimensional poverty. Many of the documents in the run-up to the SDGs articulated the need to go beyond the $1.25 a day, the earlier Millennium Development Goal definition of poverty, and recognize its multidimensionality. In the end, there are 17 
sustainable development goals. And the first of those is to end poverty in all its forms. So the definition of the first goal already has a recognition that poverty is not just multi not just monetary, but it has many forms and dimensions. And the second sentence of the preamble recognizes that reducing poverty in all its forms is the greatest global challenge, giving it a priority among the SDGs. There are 169 targets in the SDGs. The first is to end $1.90 a day poverty. The second is to cut by half multidimensional poverty, poverty in all its dimensions, according to national definitions. And that's where the national MPI fits in. In terms of SDG indicators, there are 232 some distinct indicators. The first is $1.90 a day poverty. The second is national monetary poverty. And the third is the indicator for SDG 1.2. So it is where the national MPIs will be reported. So what this shows is that already multidimensional poverty has a kind of prominence and visibility in the sustainable development goals. But there are three other things of note. The first is that any multidimensional poverty index draws together indicators, and many of these are SDG indicators that are of particular importance for that country. And so, for example, the global MPI touches on SDG indicators 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, and 11. A national MPI will identify the SDG indicators to which it is related. So the MPI also acts to collect together certain deprivations and give them particular visibility. The second is that um, the SDGs focus on integrated policies, multi-sectoral policies that address interlinked deprivations together. Now the MPI is the best direct measure of interlinked deprivations because it begins at its basis with a profile of deprivations each poor person experiences together. So they are interlinked at the level of the household. Therefore, the MPI can be a guide to integrated policies because it brings together definitions, information on how the deprivations track. For example, if you look at the people who are deprived in nutrition across um, the developing world, in a number of cases, that can be the only deprivation that they have. On the contrast, if you look at people who are deprived in electricity, almost all of them have other deprivations as well. And so by understanding the structure and the interlinkages among sets of deprivations, which is what the MPI adds, it is easier to advance the integrated policies, which the SDGs advise, that break silos and address deprivations very cost-effectively. And the third is that a fundamental principle of the SDGs is to leave no one behind. Now, a multidimensional poverty measure usually focuses on people who are deprived in several indicators at the same time. So of all the SDGs, it's the only indicator in a sense that already identifies as poor people who are being left behind in several indicators at the same time. But also, as we track MPI over time, we will always look and at the poorest regions, the poorest groups, by disabilities, by um, any other variables that the survey permits us, for example, children and age cohorts. And we'll see if the poorest groups reduce poverty the fastest. That is, are they catching up or are they being left to fall further behind? So the MPI aligns with the SDGs. It comes into the first goal, the second of 169 indicators indicator 1.2.2 of the SDG indicators. And it also supports the SDG policies of having integrated approaches that address interlinked deprivations together and of leaving no one behind. So it is our hope that by sharing these methodologies with a wider community, that more hands will find more creative ways to reduce the abject suffering and deprivations that so many continue to endure.